Lecal vapor for disease evidence-based treatment. Our decision making in lecal vapor for disease is dependent upon prognosis, and we know that uh, age at onset one is one of the most important prognostic factors. And patients who would start to get parental disease before the age of six years should have good prognosis. And the second important um, prognostic factor is the severity of the disease, according to Catalyst uh, class for the head involvement, solar Thompson subcondral fracture extent, lateral pillar height according to Herring the presence of two or more head at risk signs and premature facial closure. Factors affecting the outcome are age at onset and Hanikam and his group in Texas got right. Uh, grouped the patients into below six years, got prognosis, six to eight years, questionable, and more than eight years, particularly in girls, poor prognosis. And second, severity of the disease, and third, treatment, uh, operative versus non-operative, and the timing of treatment. Difficulties in decision making. Uh, Imperative disease are mainly due to the severity and the course of the disease cannot be predicted early before the development of significant femoral head deformity. And for older patients more than 8 years of age at the onset of the disease, we don't know if it, if it is better to institute treatment early in the sclerotic stage before femoral head collapse or later when the lateral pillar class can be determined. Sauter in 1984 outlined methods of treatment which are observation only, intermittent symptomatic treatment, early definitive treatment, containment surgery, or non-surgical late surgical treatment to correct existing deformity and late surgical treatment for degenerative arthritis of the joint. Treatment options which can be considered now are medical treatment, antiresorptive drugs to decrease osteoclastic activities or BMBs to enhance angiogenesis and endocultural ossification. However, these methods of treatment are still uh, experimental so far to mechanically allow the joint uh, by restricting weight bearing, use of crutches or wheelchair, bracing and arthrodiastasis. Femoral head containment, surgical or non-surgical, non-surgical like in petri cast, surgical with a pelvic, femoral or combined osteotomies, treatment of non-containable femoral heads with hinged abduction with approximate femoral valgus extension osteotomies or shelf astabloblastes, and last, late reconstructive surgeries to correct intraarticular deformities like femoral stabular impingement, whether surgical dislocation or arthroscopic approaches, or to correct extraarticular abnormalities like femoral neck lengthening and greater trochanteric advancement. Non-operative treatment. Before 1960s, we thought that the head is soft and should be protected with prolonged bed rest non bearing protocols. After 1960s, the theory of biology plasticity saw so the head is not soft but rather molds under stress and should be kept within the established socket to keep spherical shape. When we see parathyroid disease early, particularly in young children, we should start early symptomatic treatment with decreased activities Restriction of bearing with crutches, particularly in acutely painful hips, or even the use of wheelchair, briefly, short-term use of anti-inflammatory drugs, one or two days of bed rest. Abduction casting. Why the abduction with bearing cast was introduced by Petri and Petnik in 1971, and in their original study, they, their treatment protocol was first bed rest and traction uh, for the muscle spasm till 45 degrees hip abduction is obtained, and then Petri cast applied and changed it every three to four months with knee exercises in between cast changes and total duration of petri cast was an average 90 months. This is not our current standard and we use now petri cast very briefly in cases of, of acute limitation of the hip range of movement uh, uh, for a maximum six weeks plus minus adductor tenotomy and after the six weeks we should move to another method of containment. Braces. There are different types of braces used in parathyroid disease like Scottish Rite abduction brace, Toronto brace, A-frame and others. And in earlier studies in 1992, with the use of Scottish Rite orthosis, they failed to show effectiveness in birth disease, particularly cataract grades 3 and 4 patients. However, in a recent study uh, by Rich and Schnoker from Washington, um, reported in a controlled study their 25-year experience in the treatment of leg calvary birth disease non-operatively, with just range of movement exercises and A-frame orthosis. The study included 240 hips, 213 patients with average age 6 years, 2 to 11. The hips were in the sclerotic or fragmentation stage. The treatment protocol started with restoration and maintaining satisfactory hip abduction with an abductor tenotomy and abduction cast, then range of movement exercises and A-frame orthosis 20 hours every day for 6 to 9 months, followed by part-time use for 4 to 6 months. Results. Pillar A hips were all spherically congruent. Pillar B hips, 89% were spherical. Pillar C hips, 67% were spherical, which is an excellent result. And interestingly, 
they found that age didn't correlate with the outcome, which is not in keeping with our current expectation and knowledge. Overall, 78% of pillar B and C hips were spherically congruent at maturity, and overall 93% of hips were congruent. According to the authors, this kind of treatment, which maintained hip range of movement plus the use of A-frame orthosis, resulted in a high proportion of spherically congruent hips for patients of all ages, irrespective of the extent of the disease, which is not again in keeping with our current knowledge with Barthes disease. And the conclusion that surgical treatment is not required in leg calvary Barthes disease. The main criticisms of pricing is first limited abduction, particularly in acutely painful hips, as you see in the X ray on the right side uh, of the left hip, inability to restrict weight bearing and high impact activities, compliance issues required prolonged treatment, which might have psychosocial impact on young children, operative treatment for active Barthes disease. We can do containment surgeries, pelvic sided, femoral sided, or combined pelvic side like Salter osteotomy, treble and nominate osteotomy or shelf astaploblasty, femoral proximal femoral varus osteotomy, plus minus greater trochanteric epiphasic diseases. For hips with hinged abduction and containable hips like shelf astaploblasty or proximal femoral valgus extension osteotomies, or to mechanically allow the hip with arthrodiastasis. Salter osteotomy is famous uh, as a containment surgery, and advantages uh, first, uh, it does not shorten the limb, nor does it affect the length of the abductor muscles, Complications are inadequate femoral head coverage, loss of acetabular fixation, failure of fixation, decreased range of movement. There is a concern right now of too much anterior coverage and creating acetabular retroversion and anterior femoral acetabular impingement, particularly with the recent reports of the prevalence of acetabular retroversion and hips with leg calvary Barthes disease. Treble and nominate osteotomy can be used as well for containment surgery. Proximal femoral varus osteotomy is very famous, and I usually use the locking uh, pediatric hip plate and I uh, usually uh, go for 20 degrees varus proximal femur. Complications of varus osteotomy include excessive proximal femoral varus with limb shortening, abductor weakness, abductor lurch, overriding greater trochanter, lateral impingement. Salter osteotomy plus proximal femoral varus osteotomy can be combined in older groups, older children above than the age of 9 years. How much varus is required? Should we lower the neck shaft angle to about 90 degrees or 100 degrees? To answer this question, Harry Kim and his group uh, did a, uh, publish an article in JVGS 2011, and they found that big uh, various deformities were not uh, advantageous in Perthes disease, and the recommendation was that uh, 10 to 15 degrees of various correction is enough. Also, that cases can be done with a laser of device or hip distractors or the fixed to unload the hip joint. And I use this technique in older children early in the necrosis stage before fragmentation. Like this girl, 12 year old, you can see on the left side sclerotic capital epiphysis and early Barthes disease. So, what I've done is small core decompression, injection of bone marrow aspirate concentrate plus hip distractor, and on the right side, 18 month follow up x ray after distractor removal. Shelf astabloblasty can be used for both containable and uncontainable hips, but it's more famous for uncontainable hips like those x-rays from the article published by Chewy in uh, JBGS 2000, 2009. And as you see, if the lateral extrusion of the femoral head is uncontainable inside the acetabular socket, you can cover it with a shelf astabloplasty, and according to them, the result is good with a spherical head. Proximal femoral valgus osteotomy is indicated in uncontainable head, so I can move the laterally extruded part of the femoral head away from the edge of the acetabulum. Uh, the, regarding the results of surgical containment, there are two large prospective multicenter studies uh, that I am aware about. First, published by Haring uh, et al., the Lake Calvay Perthes study group in JBGS 2004, and the second by Wig from Norway in JBGS 2008. Regarding the Lake Calvay Perthes study, uh, published by Haring et al. in 2004, the study included 345 hips and 337 patients in a prospective multicenter uh, study. All patients had results analyzed in relation to both chronological age and skeletal age based on hand x rays, five treatment groups, no treatment, brace treatment, range of movement exercises, femoral osteotomy with a neck shaft angle 110 to 115 degrees with little or no rotation in nominate osteotomy. And the osteotomies were mostly done at the stage of necrosis or early fragmentation. Uh, the results, according to them, before the age of 6 years, at the onset of the disease, no difference between treatment groups. 
before the age of 8 years, lateral bell group B did well unrelated to treatment. More than 8 years, surgical treatment was significantly better than conservative treatment for lateral bell groups B and BC. Bell C had the least favorable outcome, with no difference between the operative and non-operative groups unrelated to age. Strong prognostic factors are age, lateral bell class, and female gender. Criticism of this paper First, the power of the study is questionable, with many subcategories and small patient numbers. Number two, Stuhlberg class 3 was considered as a good outcome, which is not the case as we know right now. Number three, operative treatment was performed during the stage of necrosis in most of the cases, and Biller class would be determined by the early fragmentation, not the stage of necrosis. Early operative treatment, in particular proximal femoral osteotomy, might change the Biller's class or might even partially or totally abort fragmentation stage, as we will discuss later on. As you see from this table published in the leg Calvary birth study group, for example, in uh, lateral pillar PC uh, border group, if the age is more than 8 years, the change was mainly in the Stuhlberg class 3 oval heads. So most of the hips were in Stuhlberg class 3 compared to Stuhlberg class 4 and 5 in the operative treatment group compared to the non-operative non treatment group. And they, and they considered this a significant improvement in the outcome. And it's exactly the same if we are analyzing the data according to the skeletal age more than or less than six years. So more, most of the change was actually in the class 3 Stuhlberg and class 4 Stuhlberg with more class 3 in the operative treatment group. However, if we will look at the class 1 and 2 spherical hips, they are very similar in both the non-operative and operative treatment groups. Herring and his group, Dan Sukato and Larson from Texas Scottish Rite, published another study in JBGS 2012 which reported on the rates of degenerative arthritis uh, 20 years down the line after Perthes disease and they found that only Stuhlberg class 1 and 2 spherical heads had low rate of secondary degenerative osteoarthritis while Stuhlberg class 3 hips and Stuhlberg class 4 and 5 hips had identical high rates. So right now when we are classifying uh, the outcome of the femoral head shape after Perthes disease we classify it into spherical class 1 and 2 or aspherical class 3, 4, and 5, and we know that spherical hips will have good prognosis, aspherical hips, whether class 3 or 4 or 5, according to Stuhlberg classification, will have poor prognosis in terms of secondary degenerative osteoarthritis. If we will rewrite the results of this study and we will group Stuhlberg 3 with 4 and 5, then we will have different results. So, for example, in pillar B cases, if the age is more than 8 years chronological, the operative treatment will uh, yield far better results than non-operative treatment. But in the BC borderline, Biller's class, as you see here, there is no improvement with the operative treatment. Actually, the operative treatment did worse than the non-operative treatment. And finally, if the surgery is done before the age of 8 years in the BC borderline, we can see marginal improvement, but it is not statistically significant. So 64% of the operative treatment group had spherical hips compared to 29% in the non-operative treatment group. It's the same if we will do our analysis based on the skeletal age below and above 6 years. So in Beller B class, operative treatment have better prognosis and better outcomes, 74% spherical hips compared to 43% in the non-operative group. But again, if the patient is more than 6 years and BC border group, the operative treatment didn't differ significantly from non-operative treatment. And if the surgery was done before the age of 6, skeletal age, then we can see some modest improvement in the outcome with 57% spherical hips compared to 30% spherical hips with non-operative treatment. In summary of conclusion of that important article, patients below 6 years of skeletal age, 8 years chronological age, did better in Biller B group are related to treatment. Patients above 6 years skeletal age, more than 8 years chronological age, Biller B, surgical treatment yielded more class 1 and 2 hips, spherical hips. Biller B C patients did marginally better if surgical treatment was performed before the age of 6 years skeletal age or 8 years chronological age but this was not statistically significant. Beller C patients had the worst outcome, and even if surgical treatment performed before 6 years skeletal age or 8 years chronological age, the uh, chance to have aspherical femoral head was more than 60%. The other large prospective uh, multicenter study was from Norway, Perthes National Study, published by Wig and et al. in JBGS 2008. 
included 358 patients followed up for five years. HEPs were classified according to a modified two-group category classification, either less or more than 50% necrosis and involvement of the femoral head, and the lateral pillar classification system. Outcomes modifies Tulberg group A, class 1 and 2, group B, class 3, oval HEPs, group C, class 4 and 5, flat heads. So they have used the same method like uh, Herringital Black Calvary Birth's Disease study. Treatment groups, physiotherapy, Scottish Rite, abduction orthosis, or proximal femoral varus osteotomy. According to the results, if the femoral head involvement is less than 50%, 84% will have spherical heads, and none was in the group 4 and 5 Stuhlberg flatheads. Patients with femoral head involvement more than 50%. If the child is below 6 years of age, no difference between treatment groups. If the child more than 6 years of age, proximal femoral osteotomy had best results compared to orthosis and physiotherapy. Prognostic factors were modified, category classification, lateral pillar class, and age. Limitation of the study. First outcomes were not reported according to lateral pillar relation to age for comparison with the Perthes study group. Second stage at which osteotomies were performed was not mentioned. Third, Stuhlberg class 3 were still reported separately from class 4 and 5 and we know for now that they have the same prognosis. So if we see the detailed results, uh, interestingly, lateral pillar C patients had Stuhlberg 1 and 2 spherical hips in only 30% which is in keeping with the results of Herringital. If we see the details of the treatment groups, if the child is less than 6 years of age, we can see that in the osteotomy group, 52% had Stuhlberg class 1 and 2 spherical hips compared to 45 and 53% in the orthosis and physiotherapy group. So there is no difference between non-operative and operative treatments. But if the child is more than 6 years of age, in the osteotomy group we can see 43% of the hips will have class 1 and 2 spherical heads, while in the non-operative groups, 20 and 33% with orthosis and physiotherapy respectively. There is another important study published this year in 2020 in the journal Children Orthopedics by Benjamin Joseph and Harry Kim and others. And they tried to find if performing early proximal femoral varus osteotomy in the necrosis stage, stage 1 and A and 1P, would significantly affect the evolution of like calvary birth disease. And they found that the fragmentation stage might be partially or completely bypassed, which would significantly shorten the duration of the disease. So they have evaluated 25 patients prospectively with average age 7 years and they found 4 fragmentation patterns if the osteotomy was done early on. First, typical fragmentation in 4 patients, bypassing fragmentation completely in 3 patients, partially bypassing fragmentation or abortive fragmentation in 6 patients, and atypical fragmentation with horizontal fissuring in 12 patients. However, to be cautious, all patients in the study had proximal femoral varus osteotomy 20 degrees and strict non-wood bearing for 6 months post orthopedy so we don't know if this change in the evolution of the disease was due to the mechanics and mechanical effect of proximal femoral osteotomy or due to the strict non-wood bearing for 6 months after the surgery. Uh, those are x-rays from the, from the study with a typical fragmentation as you see the uh, longitudinal fragmentation lines and the uh, proximal capital epiphysis or a typical fragmentation horizontal fissuring as you see or bypassing fragmentation so the sclerotic capital epiphysis will go into healing without fragmentation or abortive fragmentation you will see early fragmentation but it will not evolve into a complete fragmentation stage and will just pass into healing stage. The duration of the disease was in average 24 months in patients who bypassed fragmentation compared to 44 months in patients who went through typical fragmentation stage and the sphericity of the head was better sphericity deviation score and patients who bypassed fragmentation compared to other groups, but this was not statistically significant. Should we do trochanteric epiphysiodesis with the proximal femoral osteotomy? According to uh, Benjamin Joseph again in a, a JBO uh, article 2009, uh, they found that effective trochanteric arrest could be achieved if the, the patient had epiphysiodesis before the age of 8 and a half. And half of the children between eight and a half to ten years might get effective trochanteric arrest. And the recommendation of the authors at this article was to do greater trochanteric epiphysiodesis to minimize trochanteric overgrowth, trendelip bird gate, and older birthless disease patients. However, this is not um, uh, our usual practice. 
So, in short, and in summary, in Parkinson's disease, we should start treatment early in necrosis or early fragmentation stage if we will do an operative treatment, and it's according to the age of onset uh, of the disease. If before six years of age, non operative treatment should be our standard of more than six years, according to the Barthes study group, Herring et al., Pillar B or Pillar B C, they should have operative treatment. According to the Norwegian study by Wegeta, if they involve with more than 50% femoral head, then operative treatment should be considered. Bilateral Barthes disease can be seen in 8 to 24% of the cases. And bilateral Barthes disease affects significantly younger patients with average age at onset 6 years, according to another study by Wig et al. in uh, JBGS 2016. And there are two subcategories. Uh, if both hips will show Barthes disease uh, simultaneously, concurrent onset or metachronous onset, or one hip will show Barthes disease, and after a couple of months, the other hip will show the signs of Barthes disease, we call it sequential or synchronous. Um, According to the published literature, it appears that bilateral Parsons disease carries worse prognosis compared to unilateral affections, despite younger age at onset. And sequential bilateral Parsons disease is associated with the worst outcome with double rates of flat femoral head at healing. This is a patient of mine, as you see, started to get Parsons disease on the right side on the left x-rays uh, by the age of 4.5 and, and by the age of 5 and 10 months, we can see bilateral Barthes disease, sequential bilateral lateral subluxation, which is one of the poor prognostic factors in Barthes disease. Barthes disease in adolescents more than 12 years of age, uh, three patterns of that disease. The first pattern is late onset, which is similar to uh, younger children uh, with the disease followed by a sequence of healing, but adequate epifzial remodeling didn't occur. Two, segmental collapse, early irreversible collapse, part of the epifzial with gross deformation of the femoral head, and three, destructive, with failure of revascularization. And in, the, in this category, it's the worst clinical outcome with frequent association of incapacitating and significant pain. And this is one of my patients, 12 year of age. And as you see, this is a destructive type with a failure of revascularization. She was feeling uh, a lot of pain, and that's why we have to do um, early total hip replacement by the age of 13, as you can see, intraoperatively significant femoral head deformity. Thank you.